You could tell I was young, you know, like, you know, soap behind the ear kind of thing. When did you meet Joe Kalani? Uh, I heard about him well. You see, I got my first job. I taught my way in those days. It was easier to get a job than that one. I taught my way into a job as movie editor of Life magazine without just by writing you know, an insolent letter to them saying that their movie reviews were terrible. And uh, so they decided to try me out. Another oh, yeah. meant being invited to lunch every day at 21 by some press agent who wanted to introduce me to a star, a Hollywood <laughs> star. And it was a, a, a very famous English actor whose name was Lawrence, uh, Lawrence Olivier. Lawrence Olivier. Uh, we had lunch and he had a yelled he early, he said, because he had an appointment with this wonderful uh, gymnasium. And, Eighth Avenue. We lived in a world then where there were no fitness gyms. You know, there was no yeah uh, gym on every corner. Jay talks about this too. You it's, know, there's no yeah yeah. There's not you know nobody exercised. You had a a gym was boxing. There were boxing gyms. There were weightlifting or bodybuilding gyms, mm -hmm. and there were dance. Uh, gymnasiums for dance. I, I thought maybe I might well look up that gymnasium someday. And uh, it took me 10 or 15 years to do it, but then one day, I, meanwhile there'd been a war and I was coming back and I was doing some uh, some work for, for life. I was maybe writing a book for life. And I thought, what the hell? Why don't I go look up this joke? That is that, uh, I was still a young photographer. Mm -hmm. uh, I got drafted. I got my draft notice mm -hmm. in uh, August of uh, uh, yeah, August of 1961. I got my notice to report in 60 days mm -hmm. for a physical, and if I passed a physical, be prepared to enter the, the army for two years. Right. Around the 7th of October, I got a call from Buddy Bloodgood, mm -hmm. and he said. Uh, are you in the army yet? And I said, no. He said, good, I have something for you. One day assignment in New York. Go over there, 8th Avenue, 56th Street. There's a guy over there, his name is Joe Palates. And he, <laughs> he has a gym. And he's got these equipment that he's built uh, to exercise with. He said, they're kind of like torture machines. He said, you'll love it. And I went there and I realized he was just uh, I've explained so he was a kind of cult figure um, with ballet uh, ballet dancers. Right. He had a steady, steady diet of ballet dancers and a few went theater people, some actors and producers. But uh, they all, it was a private secret for these people, everybody, if they kept it. It was, it was a, exactly something special for them. Well, I came in and I enjoyed him very much. You know, it was a very, you met him just enough to know he could be a very enjoyable yes. creature. And then I thought, well, why don't I write a little article about him? And I, so I'm so to Sports Illustrated. And One of our uh, freelance writers is a, a working out there, and he wrote this story about this guy. It's That's a, Robert Wernick. Yeah, and it's an interesting story, he said. So you go over there, and Wernick is going to show up in the afternoon, and you can take his picture. Then you called me up and said you're taking it. I don't know when I come over, and I came over and, and shot that picture for us, and then it, that was that. I remember this uh, going up to the door, you know, and it, it had uh, Pilates, uh, it said Pilates, uh, you know. Contrology or something? Gymnasium, I mean, you know. Uh, Did it say Pilates or Contrology? Because, you know, he called it. Well, it had, it, 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 he didn't call his work Pilates until near the end, when he got lawyers involved in, mm -hmm. in trying to market him. Oh. And they, then they, they're the ones who started the uh, Pilates method. Oh, okay. The word Pilates method. Yeah. But he called it contrology, you know. Right, right. But of course, his, his, his name was on the door, because yeah. it was like, you know, J. Pilates, Pilates. you know? Yep. So we went in there, and then he showed up. He, and he was, you know, I mean, he was naked, you know, I mean, he, had, he was wearing these bathing trunks. Mm -hmm. uh, so here he was with the cigar and uh, 
he had a strange eye, mm -hmm. you know, which I, people tell me is a glass eye. Mm -hmm. I thought it was a wall eye at the time, okay, you know, yeah. that he had an eye that uh, was lazy, mm -hmm. you know, lazy eye. But, mm -hmm. So I had to watch that in my photos, you know. And he also had a funny way of... Um, Did you choose to try to capture the glass eye, the, his funny eye, because they told you to make him look crazy? Uh, no, but it was there. You okay. Know. In the picture they were in of the you, portrait of yeah. him, he looks a little crazy. Yeah, you know? yeah. And his eye is a little off, you know. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is what he looked like when I first met him. Just imagine him with a cigar in his hand. Right. <laughs> there are quite a few pictures that are around of him holding a cigar. Do you remember what the studio was like? I mean, people it tell me it was really... Grimy, grimy, grimy. Yeah, well, you know, it had a grimy sense to it. I, right. I don't know if it was really grimy. It was, I mean, like filthy. It wasn't, I don't think it was. It was just dark, and everything was old. Yeah. A lot of old. Yeah. Know. He was very proud of the fact that he was 80 years old and that he was way more fit than I was, you know. Mm -hmm. He asked me how old I was. I said 24. <laughs> and he said, so you're 24? And he says, can you touch your toes? And I said, no. He said, he said, let me see, let me see. So I couldn't. I mean, by the way, I still can't. I never, never in my life could I touch my toes. Okay. So I tried to touch my toes and I couldn't touch my toes. And then he went down and put his palms yeah. on the floor. Right. You know, which was like, wow. <laughs> and, and he would say, he said, I'm 80 and you're 24 and you can't do this. Mm. He says, no, why? So he said, you know, he would say, do you have an answer? Do you know why? And I said, because I don't practice. And he goes, there you go. Oh. He says, you, you should keep trying to touch your toes all the time, and eventually you will. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so stuff nice. like that. Also, he arm wrestled with me, uh -huh. you know, wow. on the on the uh, uh, trap table Wow. on each side. So you both kneeled down and... Yeah, yeah, you know, oh. arm wrestled with me. <laughs> and of course, he, you know, he was so much stronger than me. Yeah. And I was 24, because right. I was a skinny 24, you well. know. But, you know, I, I, I couldn't budge him, you know, it was like, and I knew that he was, you know, suckering me into this. <laughs> of course. You know. And, oh, arm wrestle me. Uh, arm and then wrestle me. put me down. Then we thumb wrestled, and we, you know, you know, like, yeah. like this. And yeah. he, once he got my thumb, he pressed it that it hurt. You know, it's like, <laughs> ah! Uh, he talked about the body's immune system. I mean, he talked about it like we were five-year-olds, you know. Right. And, and he said, you know, you... Your body has uh, all these fire engines in it, you know. Uh, uh, you have fire engines under your arms, you have fire engines in your groin, you know, the, the firehouses, you have firehouses. These are your lymph nodes. Yeah, and you know, and they, they're all, they, they, they're, they're stay at the ready till the alarm goes off. And the alarm goes off when something happens to your body. If a, if a disease germ comes into your body, the, the fire engines rush, to the place and they put the fire out. He said, so then, you know, and he said, you, do you understand that? Yeah, we understood that concept. And he goes, okay, now, if you hurt yourself, if you hurt yourself, the body has the same reaction to the, the, the pain and the hurt as it does to disease coming into it. Mm -hmm. The fire engines have to go out. Mm -hmm. You strain your back, you know, All you right. strain your calf muscle. The fire engines have to go out and work on it. While they're working on that, the disease can come in and there are not enough fire engines to put it out. And that's how you get sick. If your body is not fit, if it's not healthy, it cannot fight these fires. Right. And he said, so he said, through contrology, when you're here, in contrology, you work, your body is fit. Your fire engines just stay in the firehouse waiting for real fires. <laughs> you know, it's wait. a wonderful image. Yeah, you know, and it made some, it made so much sense to us. Yeah. And to this day, I say to myself, why didn't I uh, continue with this? Right away. If it wasn't for the army, I probably would have, because I really liked him. After I took these photos of Joe and turned him into Sports Illustrated, I was drafted. I went in the army. Oh. Yeah. And I was gone, and right. I didn't know what happened to these pictures, and I never thought about them again hmm. for years. Wow. Then I went off to California and something else that I was doing, and I never thought of it until uh, then I got a letter from Joe saying, uh, since, the, since that article hit the newsstands, since the morning it hit the newsstands, the telephone hasn't stopped ringing. <laughs> 
and he'd become famous. I mean, he was famous with this little tiny yeah. group, but out of the explosion that set off, as he began, you know, people knew him all over the country and eventually all over the world. And when you went there, did Joe work with you, or did you do your own thing that he sort of watched? Um, well, it, uh, oh no, he worked with everyone, but he had his wife and an assistant, and yeah. Sarah was working with you all the time. One of those three was always working with you, and if it was someone else, or if they told you, I mean, there's some things you did automatically, you did it later and you did the hundred. Right. And he might come over and say something, and he'd get in conversations like, well, the ones I quoted in the, uh, in the article, like the, the girl. He said she was making so much noise walking around across the room. Oh, yeah. She think he was she was an elephant, and, and she said, "Oh, Joe, now you're comparing me to an elephant." And he said, "I wouldn't insult the elephant. The elephant could walk here, not you wouldn't hear him. And you." <laughs> now I was told that you still do some Pilates exercises, right? Oh you know? well, yeah, when I get up and first thing in the morning, yeah, I do. Uh, the 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 series of five or whatever they call it, you know, the series of five? Or I, I'm not sure I do the yeah. right ones, or they just, I may have made them up, and in fact, I, in fact I've approved one, improved one of them uh, as the girls said, you know, the hundred. Yeah. You do this hundred times, well, the last twenty times I've turned my hands arms over and do it uh -huh. this way. And I find that makes it more interesting. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the Wernick, we call that. The Wernick, we call that, yes. Uh, how long did you do Pilates? Uh, did you work at the gymnasium there on 8th Avenue? Uh, when I, whenever I was in New York, my wife and I, were, we would go there to, uh, once or twice a week. Okay. But, uh, I then, and was five bucks then? Mm -hmm. Somebody said it was five dollars to go? Yeah. And, yes, it was expensive. <laughs> So people, he actually does a lot. He does. And then after lunch, he appeared with this turtleneck, complete and short sleeves, yeah. and a white thing, and we're convinced that Clara had said to him, you can't have the pictures taken one at your age. You know, you're not 50 years old anymore. <laughs> were you always a Jack Daniels man? Or Whenever I go into the local bar, Jack Daniels comes out to my ticket.